I'm like, you need to go to work. Just leave her alone. Don't worry about her. Then she starts crying, which I feel terrible about. But also at the same time, it's kind of like, mm. Mm. I cry all the time from stress, bitch. I cry all the time from fucking depression and anxiety. I cry. I cried for fucking Katrinka harder than this bitch is. <laughs> Nary a tear. <laughs> hands shaking. <laughs> so she starts crying and goes, well, I can't do anything without my suitcases. And I was like, what do you think? We have suitcases? We don't have extra suitcases. She's like, they're in the storage unit. By the way, side note, we've been paying for a storage unit for this bitch for four motherfucking years for the shit that wouldn't fit in this room. So now she could have gone any time. Now, today, right now, she's like, Tony's like, Mom, did you not just hear the message from Dad? He's like, I have to go to work right now. H how dare you ask me to do that for you right now? I have to go to work. You just heard that message. I have to go to work. And then she's like, well, I don't know what y'all want me to do. And I was like, I wanted you to do this a week ago when we came in here and said a week ago, what do you need to do? Well, I'm just going to, I'm good. I'm just going to wait. So my husband left for work. I, finally, I was like, you need to go. You need to go. And the whole, again, the whole time that this is going on, I'm trying to fucking sweep and mop my goddamn living room. So I walk away because I'm so mad at her that I'm literally like, I need to walk the fuck away from this. So I walk away, sweep a little section, hear them screaming, walk back, sweep a little section. So it's so unbelievably frustrating. So finally, I'm like, you need to just go. I was like, fuck her. You need to just go to work. That's where. So I'm like, you really need to go to work. Incoming call. Oh, that's him Press calling you me. Press Uconnect phone Hold button on. to answer. <sighs> Finally get my husband to leave for work. I'm like, I, he's like, don't go in there. Don't, and she's going to come out. Like, I'm, I'm stuck in the fucking house with her all day. And I'm cleaning downstairs. So she's going to come out in her room and she's going to play the victim. And she's going to, I didn't, I wasn't trying to upset you. And you're just the sweetest person. And I'm just like, I don't want to play that fucking game with you, bitch. I've done it too many times. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <gasps> Y'all, you're not gonna believe you just pulled up behind me. Oh my god, these fucking Jehovah's Witnesses that come to my house all the time. Her name's Rose. She's actually a really, really sweet lady, and I always like to talk Incoming to her. Incoming call. But Press I really you just can can't right now. button to answer. Hey. So, like, no joke, y'all. The Jehovah's Witnesses are at my house. They just happened to come by today, today of all motherfucking days. See? So 30 minutes later, I'm, I'm, I was very nice to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, most people are very much like, oh my God, Jehovah's Witnesses run away. I am not like that. I'm kind to everybody. I let them in my house. I make them coffee. The only people I don't talk to are the Mormons because I'm afraid of them. Um, because when you become a Mormon, you have to sign a legally binding contract that says that you will give them 10% of your earnings for the rest of your life. So if I ever was found by the Mormons, they could legally come after me. Like, they probably wouldn't, but they legally can, and they make that very clear. So, I, being a smart one who likes to avoid debt, stay away from the Mormons. But I'm actually really kind to the Jehovah's Witnesses, and I'm like, come on in and have coffee, and I will talk to you about Jesus all day long. Never going to go to your church, because I love Christmas too much, and y'all don't do Christmas. But you can come in, and we can talk about Jesus all day. So, 30 minutes later, and now I'm back. Mother-in-law came out while I was out there talking to them and was so rude. Y'all, even they were like, even they were like, what? Is your mother-in-law okay? And I was like, y'all don't even know. You, you, like, you just came into like the most stressful situation in a long time. And oh, side note, my husband calls me from work and is like, hey, you know the guy in Lancaster, South Carolina that's sick with the coronavirus, which by the way, Lancaster is one hour south of us. I wasn't worried. I was like, okay. It's no big deal. It's close, but it's still not here. That guy is a Met Life representative who was in my husband's office last week, and two people, two people, <laughs> one was taken to the hospital via ambulance with suspected coronavirus symptoms, and now they're going around my husband's office in hazmat suits, spraying down all the doors. My husband works in Ballantyne Corporate Parkway. If you work there, that is happening right now. Well, 35, 40 minutes ago because I had to stop to talk to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Sorry. So I'm home now after fielding 
three calls from my husband, who's very calm. My husband is very calm, y'all. I am the anxious, nervous, little ball of stress. He is the calm one, and he is definitely not calm. He's like, Shauna, they are literally walking around my office in suits, spraying things, sanitizing doors and, and things. And I was like, well, I was like, get off the phone with me and record that because I want to see it. But he was like, I couldn't because he doesn't ever record shit. I do. I know how to record shit without even looking, but he's all stumbling around. So he's like, I couldn't get it on film for you. And I was like, that's okay. I was like, I need you to just wash your hands and be safe. But with all of that going on, I should just be able to do that and, and be doing my stuff and worrying about Haley coming home. But no. Also, hair. <sighs> Y'all. Tore up from the floor up hair. Because I was like sweating right before I was, right before all of this happened. I was in the, look how big this couch is. And I have to move it by myself. It's very heavy. So I was very much sweating and I was working hard. This is the shirt that I wear when I'm like cleaning. It has like baby food on it or something. I, I don't even know what that is. Probably some food. I don't know. And then I go to the gas station and look what I'm wearing. What is this? What is this that you're wearing? Is this a cute little skirt that Shauna's choosing to wear today? No. This is Shauna's apron that she's had that's handmade from the 40s. And a pair of stretch pants that are covered in dog fur. Would I have liked to have gone out that way? Would I have liked to have dealt with a Jehovah's Witness dress like this? No. I was so mad, I didn't even care. I just left. Do you have Patsy's hoodie? I had it, but I can't find it. I know we had some packing tape a while ago. I don't know. I think there's one place. If we have it, there's one place it would be. Tony is Tony's crazy organized. You'd be surprised how fast it goes when you... I knew, I knew it was going to... It looks worse than it is. Um, Tony's... Tony, there's one place where Tony would have it. If Tony had it, it would... I hate to ask you, but I just... No. I mine is somewhere in there, but not the chaos. I yeah, if, if he has it, it's okay. up here with the office stuff. Um, if we have it, that's where it is. I found Haley's charts, and I think you might want them. Oh, I, yeah, I definitely do. Hold on just one second. Let me see if it's in here. All right, packing tape, packing tape. I ain't even looking for the fucking packing tape. No, I ain't even looking for it. I'm just, I'm just strolling at this point. Don't know what we're looking. Ah, oh, packing tape. Ah. All right. Do we actually have any packing tape? I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Hold on. I don't think we have any. Okay, I'm going. Where's no. the best place to go buy Walmart? Um, uh, actually, like the mailboxes place are That's better. Where I look, it's ten dollars. Yeah, well, they may not have it. At I know there was some in Haley's room, but I think it might have gotten thrown away. Hold on. All of her craft stuff is under her bed. Let me see if I put it there. Let's see. Is there a thing of packing tape in here? Nope. Nope. No, I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. I'll just go, go get some. Again, with everything else that I have going on, I have to stop everything I'm doing to help her find packing tape. I bet you knew that she was moving months ago. Doesn't have packing tape two days before she's supposed to move. And I'm supposed to help her solve that problem. <sighs> Am I wrong? I am having a very hard time. I've been having a hard time for about two weeks now. I went to the doctor yesterday and I was prescribed meds 
mood stabilizers and sleepy meds and happy meds and call me meds. And it's something that I have to do every once in a while. I don't have mental illness. I have an unspecified mood disorder, which is what I, it's all I can ever get. Unspecified mood disorder. But I am struggling to do my shit and get it done and not just lay in that bed and watch The Big Bang and Young, Young Sheldon and Carol's Act and The Unicorn and The Resident and New Amsterdam and all of the TV shows that I would rather just lay in my bed and ignore my problems and fall into those worlds. But I'm trying so hard to fight that and do my shit and my mother-in-law is just making that even harder. So this is what I mean. See all that stuff? That's not normally up there. That's actually a very, usually a very clean area. These drawers, uh, they're open because I have to put the laundry away, but they've been open for like a day. And it's because she likes, I, she steps, steps and gets over her. And I'm like, I don't even care. I don't even care. Normally I would keep those closed, but I, they've been open for like a day and who cares? There's a box of miscellaneous things. Inside that, there's a box of miscellaneous things, a bag of miscellaneous things, a bag of miscellaneous things. And then look, here's my nightstand. Um, bag of miscellaneous things, bag of miscellaneous things. Food from last night that I might eat for lunch. Probably not the best decision. It's been sitting out all night, but I'm too lazy to make anything else. And there's my nightstand. Yeah, so Mercury is upgrading, and I am doing my fucking best to just get by. And my mother-in-law is making that harder. And that's the part that she doesn't understand. So pork chop is teething. And therefore she wants to chew on everything and attack everything. And I am like, I don't have teethers because I don't have a baby, but I do have a, I do have a Rick Sanchez that you can, uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Rick would mind. <laughs> so she is now claimed my Rick for hers, as you can see, like she is not letting it go. She's like, nope, it's mine. It's mine. I'm taking it. It's mine. <laughs> it's okay. You can attack Rick Sanchez. <laughs> that might be the cutest thing I think I've ever seen y'all. What am I going to do with you, you big doofus? Yep. So uh, about 11, 11.30 is when my husband called me and said two people from his office park had been taken by ambulance. And I just got a call from the CMS superintendent that said that the Charlotte Mecklenburg Health Department had notified them that there are two suspected cases in our area. So this is why <laughs> two weeks ago I went and bought rice and beans. This right here is why. And all of those people that were like, you were acting so crazy and you're so manic and that's, that's just, you're just acting like a crazy person. <sighs> crazy like a fucking fox. Crazy like a fucking fox. Side note, um... I'm not really one who's much for the whole I told you so thing, but I am definitely one who's, if you said that I was wrong and I know that I'm not wrong, I definitely am one to come back and be like, so, um, I would like that apology at this point. And all of those people that are making the videos about how they can't buy toilet paper and they can't buy wipes and they can't buy food. Yeah. Two weeks ago. When I made a video saying, take your ass now to the Dollar Tree, take your ass now to the Publix, because if you think you can wait until it gets to your town, you can't. And all those people that said that I was crazy and manic and I was inc inciting a riot. And don't you think you're doing a little too much there, sis? Um, at this point, I would just like to say, yeah, I got plenty of toilet paper and rice and all the stuff I need, too. I'm good. This is not for real. <laughs> so about an hour and a half ago I know I just posted them all like all of them back to back but that was my the course of the day so about an hour ago I posted the video about how I'm really struggling and doing my best to get by 
with all of that said. Clean. 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 Hello, Stitchy. Miscellaneous box of stuff gone. Miscellaneous bags gone. Miscellaneous bags gone. My nightstand is nice and clean and organized. And uh, these are all the drugs that I have to put into a safe deposit box to go put into our storage unit to keep safe from a certain person who's coming back to our house, which is a step I have to take. So, in spite of how hard I am struggling, I am still getting my stuff done. And I'm not freaking out about COVID-19. I do this TikTok because I want to help people. But I don't just want to help you learn how to cook and how to clean. And I don't want to just help you with medical debt. Those are all, I want to help you in any way that I can. But my number one reason for coming on this app was because I wanted people that grew up in rough childhoods, foster care, abuse, neglect, you name it. I want those people to know that you can have a normal and happy life. It takes more work, but you can. But I don't want in any way for y'all to think that I am not still a very broken person. I still am broken. I have managed to glue my pieces together as best as I possibly can. But there are periods in my life where I am still a very much broken person. And it is hard for me to just do my basic shit. I get it done. Hey, Shauna, my name is Amy, and I want to thank you for putting out all the information about the coronavirus on things you need and things you should buy. It's here in my hometown, and everything is sold out everywhere. So because of your information and everything, you have helped me, and I didn't wait, and I'll be okay. So one of the things that we needed to do before Haley came home was we needed to clean her room. Her room was like any teenager's room. Stuff all over the floor, like... Stuff in drawers that shouldn't be in drawers. Stuff everywhere. So, I'm going to make this video of how nice and clean it is now because I know that it will not last for very long. Bookshelves organized. Drawers actually are organized and have appropriate things in them. Clothes are hung up in the closet. Shoes are in the corner. Those drawers are nice and organized. Even all of her art stuff is insanely organized. <sighs> so uh, All of her stuff's hooked up again. All of her Xbox and her radio and her CD player. Everything works again. Everything's plugged in. Oh, it's a lot of work, y'all. This is a video specifically for parents that may or may not have a child that self-harms. This is what you need to look for. And this is why... We have to be as diligent and vigilant as we have to be. These are all the things that we found in Haley's room while we were gone. And I'm not doing this to expose my kid. I mean, everyone knows that Haley selfs harms. But I'm doing this for other parents. Things like this, you wouldn't think. She found this in a parking lot. Walking in a parking lot. A lot of these things are things that she's just found along the way. Push pins can be a self-harm. If you see if you see this, they they wrap their arms up or their legs up after they've cut themselves. This is a dead giveaway. Sewing kits. This looks like a pen, right? Right? Nope. That's a razor. Straight razors. Look how many straight razors, y'all. That's why you have to. Here's the thing that parents don't understand. A lot of times when parents have kids that self-harm or that have anxiety, depression, bipolar, borderline, fill in the blank, they are like, okay, well, I'm going to go, my kid is broken, so I'm going to go send my kid off, and then my kid's going to come back fixed. And here's the thing. If your kid left a toxic environment and they come back to a toxic environment, they're not going to be able to stay untoxic. So it's on you. I know that my kid self-harms. I know that my kid does drugs. Now, did I have to do this extra step of going through every single book spine and every single pocket and every single purse and every single one of those fucking shelves? Did I have to do that? No. But that's the level of vigilance that you have to have as a parent. And a lot of parents don't recognize that and realize that. And they just kind of sit back and they don't understand. Like, you have to do that. If she came home to the... Now, here's the thing. Did I have to do that? 
No, absolutely not. Her therapist didn't even tell us to do that. We were going to clean up her room because her room was pretty nasty anyway, and I very rarely get a chance to get in here and vacuum because she has trauma with the vacuum. So I was already like, I'm going to clean her room. But then I'm like, while I'm cleaning her room, why not make it safer for her when she comes home? Now, here's the thing. Is she maybe still going to self-harm and do drugs? Yeah, that's a possibility. That's a choice that she will make. I will have zero control over that choice that she makes. But... Do I have control over how easy it is for her to make that choice? Yes. Can I make that choice harder for her by removing hurdles that might be in her room? Yes. Is that my responsibility as her parent? Yes. Yes. That's your responsibility. Now again, do I need to be this level of militant about going through, I'm going through my stuff too, because just because I've gone through her room, she doesn't just stop looking, like, she will come in my room, and go through my nightstand, and go through my dresser, and go through my closet, and take my drugs, and take my razors, and take my things, so I'm not only going through her stuff, I also have to go through my stuff, and remove any medications that might possibly be dangerous for her. Like, I am probably going to be getting a, a prescription of uh, clonazepam. Guess where that will be? At my husband's office. If I need one, I will drive to his office. Now, do I need to be that militant? No. But if you've ever heard of Helicopter Mom, bitches, I am Black Hawk Down Mom. And you have to be. 